three, two, one. This is Dateline News and Conversation. My guest tonight, he's returning. He does a very, very important daily blog, a missile report on the Russian missile attacks on Ukraine every day, every night. He also writes a blog. Tonight, we're going to talk about these missile strikes on Ukraine by Russia, their effectiveness. We're going to talk about um, how long before the evil empire crosses Russia's red line that could lead to lead to the unthinkable. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk with him about the mainstream media and how we've been lied to for decades. My guest returning tonight, Mr. Don Hank from Panama. Don, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Good to be back. Well, thank you. Uh, it, and it's really important, I think, to for you and me to talk about the daily reports that you put out on missile strikes in Crimea by the Russian military forces. Now, I want you to remind me and our viewers, where do you get this information? You don't get it from the New York Times. That's where, for sure. where, do you, where do you get this information? And I mean, because that, I mean, this is really important. So many people have opinions about what's going on there, but one has to question their sources. So, mm -hmm. what are your sources? You know, I think I ought to talk to some of these guys that, that are really experts on Russia and on the war in Ukraine. And, and fill them in on some of the things that they're missing. Uh, I go into, well, first of all, I go into Google and I translate one sentence into Russian. Uh, and it goes with today's date, whatever it is. Uh, and then Russian <clears throat> missile and drone strikes in Ukraine. That goes into Russian. I copy that off and uh, put it in my browser, but I can't use a regular browser if I use a Chrome. That's why I don't have Chrome, because <laughs> I, I, I didn't have Chrome. Uh, because if I go into Chrome, I get all this garbage. They're gonna bring up, uh, instead, of, instead of responding to that question, even though it's in Russian, they will give me Russian sites that, that is sites in Russian, like the BBC site in Russian, CNN site, whether, whether there's, I don't know, maybe there isn't any such one. But anyway, I get all these sites in Russian that are written by neo-Nazis. Oh, I mean neocons, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> I think they're the same thing. But, uh, and, it, and it's, not it's not helpful because what they'll give me is, for example, a load of different titles of articles uh, on strikes by the Ukrainians on Russia. They'll give me all that stuff, but they won't tell me what uh, you know what I want to know. So I have to go into Yandex, and I would recommend to anyone who wants to know what's really going on in Russia. Uh, to go into Yandex and do all your searches there because you'll get you'll get stuff that's not uh, sanitized, let's say. Uh, anyway, so I, I go into Yandex, I put in this Russian uh, search uh, phrase or sentence, and then that brings up some really interesting stuff that you probably could never get uh, on a regular browser. And, uh, but even then, there's a whole lot of things I have to do. I have to read the, the titles. And a lot of times these titles 
instead of going to today's date, they'll sometimes bring up something that is from a few weeks ago. And that's not what I'm promising my reader. I promise my readers to give them a daily update <clears throat> of the drone and missile strikes by Russia on Ukraine. Uh, so that, that's really quite a time-consuming thing these days. Uh, and sometimes you get a site that will give you a strike that was in a certain region of Ukraine. But then you'll see other uh, titles that talk about strikes in another region. So they don't always, there's not always a one article that covers the whole thing. So this is really a, a kind of a, a lot of work, but I, I think it's worth it. I, I enjoy doing it. So, Well, um, I just put up on the screen your sub stack. Uh, it is uh, uh, there it is right there, Dawn's sub stack. And what it is, is uh, Dawn Hank dot substack.com and i want everybody to take note of that because i think it's it's very important um so this is what i need to ask you don as we um continue to talk about this uh, these daily reports are really quite fascinating I got to get this out of here now. Um, there we go. Um, you you are reporting literally sometimes dozens or hundreds of drone and missile strikes all across Ukraine. What are these drone and missile strikes attacking? Are they attacking? Russia says we do not attack civilians. We attack infrastructure, military, command and control centers, military factories or mm -hmm. factories that are creating military equipment, drones, missiles, whatever it is. Um, what is Russia really doing? And from my reading your daily blog, it seems to me to be really extensive. I didn't hear you. Did you say extensive? Extensive, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, they, there is a lot of stuff. There's one thing. I, th I think you hit almost everything uh, of the kind of targets that they're, that they're going after. Uh, there's only one other one, and that would be the, uh, the – sometimes they'll even attack the train tracks themselves or a, a train station even rarely. Uh, but the substations, the, the power substations that feed trains, train tracks that would be used, the trains would be used to uh, move troops to the front line or, of course, uh, ammunition or weapons to the front line. Uh, they've been hitting quite a few of those these days, and it's... It's funny because the, the Russians don't know what they're hitting at first. <laughs> they know what they're targeting, what they'd like to hit. And uh, 99 times out of, out of 100, they do hit the target, but they don't report that they hit it until they know that they hit it. And the only way they know that they hit it is when they read the blogs where the, there's a thing called a public a public page, which is public service announcements from Ukraine. So they get some of the uh, very important information from Ukraine. And a lot of times they'll, uh, they'll report that the power is out in a vast area. Maybe 100,000 people have lost their power of their electricity. Uh, and then they know. They know, oh, we hit it. <laughs> It's, this is really fascinating. So what you basically do every day is type in, in Russian language, mm -hmm. on Yandex, 
certain keywords, and that brings up uh, a number of sites in Ukraine, primarily. No, not, not, not Ukraine. It brings it up uh, in, in sites in Russian, but the Russian sites often quote Ukrainian sites. Okay. Okay. Government now, sites. I, I, have read, I have read many reports, not from you, but from other sources, uh, where, for example, the mayor or a governor of a region mm -hmm. will confirm strikes. Mm -hmm. Vitaly Klitschko, yeah. who is the mayor of Kiev, mm -hmm. has publicly said many times that Kiev has been without water, without electricity, right. without sewerage. Now yeah. he's pissed off Zelensky. And Zelensky is reported today to about to fire many people in his top people in his administration. Klitschko is one of those people, not in the administration, but is the mayor of Kiev, who I read today is likely to go. Now, I have this question. I don't think anybody other than the Russians <laughs> who know what they've been hitting, how many strikes they've made, how many drone attacks? Only the Russians know that, and they don't report everything. Only a few Russians. <laughs> well, I think I think the the Russian military defense. I think Shoigu. I think you know the military knows what they're doing. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but this is my question. I've been following you now for I think well over a year. How can Ukraine still be standing? on with these daily massive missile and drone strikes how how can they be still standing i don't know i don't know how long they will be standing in fact uh the re the reports aren't really clear i we don't really know how long it takes to replace uh, a power station or a substation but it takes probably a few days or, or more and of course uh, I guess they're getting these the equipment from other countries I don't know if they produce their own uh, electrical equipment or not so yeah I would think by now Ukraine would be done but well you know there, there are people uh, very popular commentators from the United States, Scott Ritter, Douglas McGregor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Alexander Mercurius, who's from London. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all predicting that, that Ukraine is staggering. The game is over. The war has been won. And yet they're still able to continue um, what Russia calls terrorist strikes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Belgorod. They just sunk a freighter off of Sevastopol here in the Black Sea uh, that was carrying apparently weapons. Uh, and the big news last week was that Ukraine, using an American Patriot missile complex, yeah. shot down the <laughs> Russian IL. 76 mm -hmm. aircraft that was carrying prisoners of war to swap. Um, I, 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 I don't know that anybody has the answer, but Don, yeah. I cannot believe that Ukrainian military are, are commanding and firing American Patriot missile complexes. I can't believe they know how to do that. I cannot believe that without the help of CIA and MI6 yeah. and their SBU, that they're getting explosives smuggled into Russia and Crimea. 
I, I can't believe that Ukraine, after two years now, is able to conduct all of this on their own. What are your thoughts? They don't. They don't. But I imagine there are some Ukrainians who are well enough trained to use the Patriot system and, and other uh, sophisticated equipment. But uh, just a few weeks ago, we uh, I had this on, on my uh, report. Um, that Russia had hit something in Kharkov, one of the, uh, I don't know what it was, a hotel or something that it was full of mercenaries, French mercenaries. And they killed a lot of them, sent a lot of them to the hospital. Now those guys were probably very high ranking. And I do think that they, I read later that these guys, um, were supposedly mercenaries but actually what they did they quit their they quit their their uh, regular uh post in the military of one of the nato militaries i guess it was french yeah so so that they could sign up as mercenaries in ukraine it's all fake of course that the whole western uh combined west is a basically a fake organization everything they do is fake and everything you read about them is fake. <laughs> so you know i think those guys were doing very high uh very sophisticated jobs that nobody else could do and they're really ticked off about it that these guys were killed well it's also been reported over the last year or so that uh, high-ranking American officials, French, German, uh, UK, have died because of missile strikes. Mm -hmm. um, let's, uh, let's change the focus here on the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we both have friends that are back in the United States, and I keep telling them, you cannot believe anything that you read in your mainstream media or you watch on your television. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what's really happening, flip it over 180 degrees, and that's the truth. <laughs> now, Pretty much so. we don't need to get into the mainstream media, but what I want to get into is what's happening in Europe. And this isn't coming from Russian propaganda. Mm -mm. We are seeing cracks in NATO mm -hmm. and the EU for support for Ukraine. Most recently, Viktor Orban in Hungary mm -hmm. was blackmailed, really, into voting for more aid for Ukraine, because if he didn't, Brussels was going to cut off their, I, I can't, I don't know if you can call it aid, but their, their money that they would do for Hungary, and they even threatened to take away their voice in the European Union. I thought this was huge, huge news. Mm -hmm. Robert Rico in Slovakia also opposed to more aid. Germany is not able to send any more anything because Germany is ready to collapse. Yeah. So, What's your take from where you're at on what's happening to the EU and NATO? Well, um, you've got two tiers to consider. You've got the people, people level, the grassroots, and then you've got the uh, politicians and the, the elites to consider. And right now, both, both of these are swinging slowly away, pivoting away from the, uh, I don't know what you would call it, the, well, the EU and the, and the, um, and NATO. And they're, of course, to different de degrees. Some of them would say, let's get out of NATO, let's scrap it, which we should. Uh, others would say, well, you know, we got to have our own army or whatever. Uh, but it's uh, it is you're right. It's it's heading away from 
NATO. It's heading away from the EU, and I can't wait to see the EU collapse. I was part of the uh, Brexit movement. Uh, I was a sort of a cheerleader for these guys, and uh, I always said that the Brexit has to go, or that the that the EU has to go. But I didn't realize that what was going to happen was, yeah, okay, so we have Brexit now, but we have a Brexit England or, or Britain that is pro-American and and bowing and scraping before uh, Washington. So it was it was worthless. And I told them that I said your 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 Bre Brexit is was worthless. It didn't it didn't achieve any any great any important goal because you switched from one dictator to another. But uh, Germany, for example, has these different parties. One, the AfD, the uh, Alternative für Deutschland, which is uh, right sort of right wing, uh, a little bit like Trump's MAGA uh, group. And then you have a lady by the name of Sarah Wagenknecht, Sarah Wagenknecht. And she has her own, she was in the, the Linka party, the left. But she decided she didn't want to hang around these people anymore because there some of them were very pro-Ukraine and all that sort of thing. So she went out on her own. This this woman is brilliant. I wish she would become the chancellor because she would she would undo all the all the damage that uh, that's been done to Russia in the last few years. She'd reestablish the pipeline and she'd get Germany back on its feet again. But uh, so she started a thing called the, the Sarah Wagen Connect Union, and uh, very important, and it's and it's powerful, and they have marches and protests all over the place. And she's pro-Russian. She wants a step to establish relationships with Russia, and she of course wants the Russian energy. So she's got it. She's on the right track. The AFD is, is a little different. Uh, they're sort of focused on migration. Let's slow down the migration. Uh, but she's she's really, um, I don't know how much power she has as opposed to what the AFD has, but to working together, these two factions could upend everything and they could throw Schultz out on his. Yeah. I, I've been following this uh, Sarah Wagen Connect for a number of years. In fact, I emailed her a couple of years ago and she answered me. And I, I basically told her, I, I want to congratulate you on what you're doing and what you're saying. You're basically standing alone, but uh, she's on the right path. And there are others, Victor Orban. Uh, Robert Rico, yeah. even that nut job in Paris, Macron, he's saying, you know, we really have to have our own army. Uh, and the thing that I'm looking at, Don, is I have thought for many, many years now that the EU was a huge scam. And exactly. what happened? What happened to every country in the EU is they surrendered their sovereignty, their history, their values, and their culture, and their dignity to these unelected, unelected gangsters. And that's mm -hmm. what they are. Mm -hmm. They're gangsters in Brussels. And today, we are seeing thousands of farmers surrounding Brussels headquarters of the EU with their tractors. Mm -hmm. It's the burning manure. <laughs> I mean, what are your thoughts on on that? I mean, I see this as the EU really cracking and falling apart. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, this farmer revolt is everywhere. I mean, in all, it's in Holland, it's in Germany, 
uh, and, uh, and other countries as well. And they're, they couldn't do any more. They're, they're doing a great job. But, of course, they're being smashed by EU. I don't know whether they'll, they'll be able to accomplish anything in the, in the long run. Because they, well, you know what? What I've been saying all along, no farmers, no food. <laughs> You'd the, think the so. Farmers, the, yeah, the farmers themselves have the ability to starve everybody in the EU. Well, but if, if you ask Carl Schwab, he says you can eat bugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, I think the other thing that I'm reading today on RT is that uh, NATO and the EU are terrified that Donald Trump will get elected mm -hmm. because he's basically said he thinks America shouldn't be funding NATO. They should go their own way. And by extension, the EU, I don't think he has any need for these two organizations. What are your thoughts? I don't think he likes either one. Uh, and I'm not sure how he thinks because Donald Trump, <laughs> he says one thing one day, the next day he says something else. So I don't know about Donald Trump, but uh, I, I think he would shake things up. Definitely would shake things up. And he might put an end to the Ukraine war, but we don't know. We just don't know. Yeah. I know one thing. I think the, the Palestinians would go extinct if he became president. That's the one thing I have. A, well, a, you know, uh, Russia and China are going to have a lot to say about what happens there. Uh, and that's a whole other discussion. Hmm. But in terms of the EU, in terms of NATO, and what they want to, in the United States, what they want to accomplish is the balkanization, the breakup of Russia, the stealing of its resources, and to get rid of Putin. Uh, they, they'd like to go back to the years of Gorbachev and, and Yeltsin. <clears throat> and I just don't think that's going to happen. Oh, uh, God forbid. Yeah. And mm. I want your opinion on this. You know, people are starting to say, well, we need to have peace talks. And today, Russia was quoted as saying, well, maybe we'll have a, uh, a uh, demilitarized zone where whatever missiles they get from America can't reach Russia. Yeah. I have been saying all along, there are going to be no peace talks. Yeah. There is going to be total capitulation and surrender mm -hmm. under the terms of Russia's three main goals. Demilitarize, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean just demilitarize Ukrainians' army, NATO, United States, everybody else. Number two, denazify. Mm -hmm. That is going to take years to purify that evil ideology in Western Ukraine mm -hmm. that has not convinced but has threatened the rest of Ukraine to bow down and be afraid. And the third Russian goal is the complete constitutional neutrality of Ukraine. Mm -hmm where they will be, again, a neutral and friendly nation to Russia and to Europe. I don't see any peace talks. I don't see any compromise that Russia can possibly want to get involved in. What are your thoughts? Well, if you listen to Zelensky, he's going to solve it all. He's going to say, OK, the Russians, everybody out. He's going to say, give us back Donetsk. Give us back. Crimea, uh, and whatever else they've, they've lost. And so he doesn't want anything to do with, with uh, peace talks, really. I mean, it's, you, you can't say, okay, here's, the, here's my deal. I give you nothing. You take nothing. Uh, okay, you like that? Sign here. No, they're not going to do that. <laughs> Zelensky's an idiot. Well, and you know, I just read today, he just announced that he's going to fire many people in the top echelons of government, including Zaluzhny, yeah. who's his general, the head of the army. Good luck with that. Exactly. I cannot believe that the military 
is going to go along with this. I, I, I have been saying, I think there's going to be a military coup. And you know what? Mm -hmm. I don't think Zelensky is going to be taking any orders from Victoria Nuland and from the United States. What do you think? He doesn't seem to want to, he wants our money, but he doesn't want any interference at all in, in what he's trying to do. You know, the thing is, what he doesn't understand is that he is supposed to be a stooge. He's supposed to be a little vassal to Washington, and he's not. He's not being a good vassal. So they're, they would love to get rid of him. And you know where he made his, uh, I think where he changed their attitude toward him was when he, he de swore and declared that a, the missile that went into Poland and killed two Polish farm workers, that that was a Russian missile. He never, ever admitted that, uh, that it wasn't. But uh, the thing is, the, uh, Jens Stoltenberg, President Biden, and Polish President Duda, all that very same day almost, said, no, that was a Russian missile. We did the investigation. That's that. But he still won't even, he, he's such an idiot. He, he doesn't even have, know how to, to do politics. If he, if he were smart, he'd say, oh, okay, well, whatever you say. But no, no, he, he wants it all his way. And you uh, see, he's not a good, he's like uh, Frankenstein in the novel or movie, Frankenstein. He was supposed to obey Dr. Frankenstein and do whatever he said and so forth. He turned out to be a Frankenstein monster. And that's what uh, Zelensky's a Frankenstein monster. Yeah. You know, that Time article about him was on the cover, uh, you know, referred to him by his own peers as being delusional and messianic. Uh, boy, what an incrimination! Oh, it's, other than that, he's okay. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, he's a class B comedian actor, uh, and it, I'm really tired of seeing his ugly face yeah. all over the place. But I do think, given what we're hearing and reading, uh, I think he's close to being finished. Uh, Don, I want to I want to finish on this note. Um, talk briefly about the media, and you've written about this. We have been lied to forever. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned the Israeli attack on the USS Liberty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That everybody involved in that, the media and the people on the USS Liberty, were said you can never talk about this. Mm -hmm. But Israel bombed, attacked this United States military vessel. Mm -hmm. And this, given everything we've, we've been hearing about IPAC, and you know, you don't remain in the Senate or Congress unless you're beholden to Israel, mm -hmm. Joe Biden, you know, Donald Trump, all of them bought in. Um, I wonder what you think about how long the American people will continue to believe the lies. I mean, it starts with Vietnam, Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Syria, Iran, Ukraine. Israel now, oh, we're the victims. And then all the garbage that they're projecting against China. What are your thoughts? Where is this all headed? So, uh, uh, you're asking me whether the people are going to stop believing the lies at last? I read an article or just a, a, a little something that Caitlin Johnstone wrote 
about about the people of the West. And she said that she has never in her career ever before run across so many Westerners who agree with her. Something's happening. I don't know. I didn't read the whole the thing that she wrote because I was in a hurry, but uh, I believe she's right. I'm not in touch with many of my readers. Uh, I mean, I have people that I correspond with every day, uh, but I, I believe that maybe this Israel genocide, this absolute genocide, nobody can deny it, uh, has turned things around. The only problem, of course, there you have is these Christian, notice the quotes, Christian Zionists who will never change. They'll never change their mind because they think that if they say one bad thing about Netanyahu, they go to hell. God's going to yeah. strike them down. Yeah. And I, I think um, the rest of the world, uh, you know, this is horrible what's happening in Palestine. Mm. But because of this Israeli unrestrained brutality and murder, the rest of the world has woken up, I think. Oh, yeah. There are pro protests everywhere. Mm -hmm. People are, in addition to the Houthis, disrupting, you know, freight travel, oil, and goods through the Red Sea and the Suez Canal, you got the rest of the world that is now boycotting Israel. And I think this is one of the most hopeful things that humanity could ever have, that humanity is waking up. And it's not just about the genocide in Israel. It's about what is happening across the globe? It's all connected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don, I can't thank you enough for coming back on the show. We've got to do this more often, especially reporting on the missile strikes. I want to encourage people to go to your Substack, uh, Don Hank at Substack.com. Thanks so much for joining me. We'll look forward to doing it again. Thank you very much for the plug. Appreciate it.